will stand part. Members, we come now to part two. Uh, as I indicated earlier, this debate is very narrow. It involves uh, clause 16A um, and 16, uh, clause 16. Members will speak tightly to the, um, the matter before the House. Uh, point of order, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Chairman, as you um, rightly acknowledged in part one, part one did contain the majority of operative clauses in the bill. Um, the Labour opposition signalled early in the debate on part one, sir, that we would be commencing with a number of general contributions and then working through the clauses of that bill in a clause-by-clause -clause manner. Unfortunately, you took a closure motion before it was possible for us to do that. Um, of course, it's going to be difficult to generalise beyond the tight provisions relating to trusts in part two, and we won't do so, sir. But as we approach clauses one and two, uh, I would ask for your uh, consideration in respect of scope and duration of that part of the debate, because it may be necessary to sweep up some of the technical points that would otherwise have been made in part one. Um, thank, thank the member for his contribute or for his point of order. I acknowledge that clauses one and two are generally wide ranging. I um, don't necessarily accept that there hasn't been time to fully debate uh, part one. I note that the Labor Party has had uh, 16 calls. The member himself has had 15 minutes um, on this particular piece and uh, at 100 words a minute, that's a uh, pretty uh, broad brush. Um, other opposition parties took uh, five calls. So there has been substantial debate around part one. Um, however, I'm glad the member accepts that this next part will be narrow and um, he can let rip on clauses one and two. I call Mr Chair. I call Stuart Nash. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. I'm going to speak on part two of this. This is about um, non-active trusts. Mr Chair, we need to be very careful when we're looking at this because um, trusts have been used and abused to hide income from property investments for far too long. And Mr Chair, whenever I see in legislation, as I see in 43B, where it says non-active trusts may be excused from filing returns, Mr Chair, I don't think there's in, the, the, there should be a point in time where anyone is excused from filing a return, even if that return has a nil return in it, nil income or, uh, or costs, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, because the, the law around trust has been tightened up a lot recently and the reason for that is because of provisions around gift duty and the recognition that trusts have been abused. Let me give you one example, I think it was 2009, um, the IRD determined that about 10,000 New Zealand families uh, were claiming working for families because the income derived from a trust was not counted as income for purposes of working for families calculations. Now, we did tidy that up, and in fact, those 10,000 people who were deliberately rorting the law um, were brought back into the tax system. And whenever I see something around the trust that says, may be excused from filing returns, I don't think that is appropriate, Mr Chair, even though we are supporting this bill. But we have to determine what a non, um, it, it does list what a non, um, uh, a non-active trust is, but it, by the definition it provides here, I don't think that is enough to actually say you're not required to fire a return. The last thing we want to do, Mr Chair, in my view, is lose sight of actually how many trusts are holding properties or holding assets or may in fact be uh, being used to hide various forms of, of income um, in any way, shape or form. Now let me give you an example here. It says that a trust a trustee of a trust is not required to furnish a return of income for the trust if throughout the tax year the trust is, um, is an non-active trust or the trustee of the trust is made and furnished to the commissioner in a form approved by the commissioner declaration that it's non-active. But we need to understand what a non-active trust is. And that it says it's not derived or been deemed to have derived any income and has no deductions. That doesn't mean that the, track, the trust isn't active, Mr Chair. All it means is that it hasn't derived income. We all know that, um, that trustees or those who have trusts, uh, there, are, there is a lot of activity that goes on around this without necessarily deriving income. And I don't think that that means that we shouldn't be um, declaring um, uh, filing returns. Because as mentioned, the, the risk around this as I see it 
is that uh, the IRD loses track of actually how many trusts are out there, the assets that are held in trusts, and what the trustees are actually doing. And a simple file of, of um, a simple filing saying there's no activity means that at least there is some compliance that has to be undertaken. So um, uh, I just think that we should, uh, that this stuff should be tightened up. That's all I'm going to say on this.